everybody, I'm Rachel Arazzo. Welcome back to the Create a Musical Tarot Deck Challenge. This is day two. We're going to be going over the suit of cups and how key and tone can totally transform your tarot deck. So I hope everybody's doing awesome. I will wait a couple seconds for people to show up. Let's make sure that I'm live. Because that would be a good thing. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, I am. Awesome. So, one thing I wanted to say was, first of all, yesterday was awesome. And those of you that have given your um, stuff so far, that have went ahead and posted your playlists, they're wonderful. I love listening to them. One thing, I wanted to let a couple things in mind... So, first of all, if you can't figure out how to make a YouTube playlist, it's totally okay. That's why the last page of the workbook just has you write out all the songs. So don't feel pressured to have to make a playlist like everybody else. We can go on and go look up the song if we have to. So don't feel pressure for that. One thing to also keep in mind also, if you can't pick just one song... Do remember that we're creating an entire tarot deck here, the 78 card version. So if you can't figure out which song should go where, keep a bunch of them in a pile off to the side. So then you can use them for minor arcana cards. Because remember, sometimes the majors spawn little baby versions of themselves within the minors. So don't freak out about it. <laughs> Let's see, am I... Yes, I have sound. Awesome. There was something else. Also, you can start this at any time. Please don't feel the need to skip days. Um, there's no pressure for this. This isn't going to disappear like my workshops do. They're gonna, the replays are going to stay up and all the challenge material is going to stay up. And if you're a part of the email list, I will be sending it to you as well. So no worries. <laughs> don't freak out. It's not that big of a thing. Hi, Lena. I'm glad that you were able to make it. I hope your mother's doing as well, doing well as well. Let's bring this a little closer. Haha, -ha, bring it a little closer. <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about tone and keys today. And we'll wait a couple more seconds for everybody else to come. Sometimes it takes a second for notifications to go off. If you guys want to be notified whenever I'm live, actually there should be something that pops up on the side or along the bottom of your screen that says be notified whenever I'm live. That way you can see it in the group. <laughs> oh, you ran home. <laughs> well, that makes me feel special. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you had a wonderful day. I know that there's also um, some discrepancy because a lot of the people in this group are from the other side of the world as compared to the United States. So don't feel the pressure if it is 1 a.m. over there. First of all, I really appreciate that you want to stay up and talk to me. <laughs> but don't feel the pressure to get it done right then. Get yourself some rest. Don't stress yourself out. This is supposed to be fun. <laughs> and I hope you've been having fun like I have. Oh, we got a Lisa and a Kimberly in. Hi, guys. I hope you're having an awesome day. It's 8 p.m. for you. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. That's eight hours ahead here. That's not too bad. Oh. But today, we're talking about tone and keys. Do you guys, when I talked to you about music, yesterday we got a little bit technical. We're going to get more technical as the day go days goes on. So if you have issues with un understanding what I'm telling you, please let me know. Pop a comment up so I can actually explain it more. Um, who here knows what I mean when I say a key or a tone when I'm talking about music? And I'll give it a second. Because there's a bit of a delay. Let's do this. Staring at comments. <laughs> Kimberly says, I know keys, but fuzzy on tones. Okay. Lena says, I'll have issues with the note names you use. I'm used to European names. That's also true. Um, the There are different musical systems around the world. That's an awesome thing to bring up. 
Kimberly says, I grew up with a dad who played guitar and took some choir in high school. Awesome. Yeah, I I was in choir <laughs> all throughout high school, all throughout middle school and elementary school. Um, and actually in high school, there was a good point where I was in four different choir classes at the same time. <laughs> so I'm all about the music. We didn't have drama classes, though. That made me sad. When I am talking about keys, so we will go over what the different keys are, but a key is basically on a note staff how high or how low the pitch is. When I say pitch, it's basically, am I super squeaky up here? Or am I super down here? You know, the, the, it, <laughs> it's how high or how low your voice is. So that's what I mean by key. Tone, dictionary term, is usually defined by the pitch, the intensity, and the timbre, or the quality, um, of the actual sound itself. So, for example, tone can be different from a country singer to a classical singer. We were talking about that yesterday, how a country singer will have a twang to his voice. Whereas a classical singer, they're conscious about the position of their mouth and it's woo. It, it sounds different than if I'm singing country, which is further back. Um, it's also a difference in where literally the sound is inside of your mouth or inside of your body. So, for example, you can think about this with accents. I always, when I was doing accent practice, would envision a little spinning ball. And wherever it was located in my mouth, my mouth would change and that's where the sound would change. So if I wanted to do French and the balls in the middle of my mouth, I would bring it forward and my lips would get a little closed a little bit more. But if I bring it down, I'd be a little Scottish and my mouth would be closed, but my tone, my tone would be down, you know? It, it moves as I go up and da, 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 things like that. So that's pretty much what tone is. And depending on the instrument will depend on the type of tone that you give. Or depending on what the singer wants to do, that will influence the tone. So if you understood that, give me thumbs up or hearts or something. See, Lena says, I studied music for many years, so I know the subject quite well, but it's difficult in English. <laughs> it's totally okay. It's totally fine. Yeah, I know sometimes a language barrier can also be an issue. So if you ever feel overwhelmed, I've said this a couple times before, if you have a hard time explaining in English what you're trying to say, feel free to put it in your native tongue. That's why Facebook has the translation tool. <laughs> so we can still understand. So don't feel pressure. You're totally fine. Okay, I'm glad that you guys understand. So basically... Ah, Lisa, 15 years of classical piano, so you totally understand. <laughs> and so when we think of tone, usually we think of something in tune or out of tune. Even somebody that's not in music can hear when something is off, because then it's like, uh, it feels funky. That's usually when you get feedback on a stereo. You can tell when a piano's out of tune, because everything's a little bit flatter, which I'll explain what that means. So to start off, because I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> In music, we have specific ranges that our music falls into, and these are keys. So keys are usually determined by where on the piano, on the guitar, or the instrument, or where in our vocal range the sound comes from, and how fast or slow the instrument vibrates, if we think of energy here. So the basic keys go from A to G, and then it starts all over again. So. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, starts back over. L songs usually are on middle C, in the middle of a piano, um, because that is just the easiest for a lot of people to sing. The lower you get, so the more to the left on a piano that you play, the deeper and deeper it gets and the tone gets lower. Whereas the higher you go, the more to the right on the piano you play, the higher it gets. Um, and then... You see on a musical staff, the higher the note is on the musical staff, the higher the key is. The lower the note, the lower the key is. You can also usually tell this 
if you look at sheet music for a song and you see a bunch of hashtags <laughs> or sharps or you see a bunch of flat signs for flats, that'll determine how much of a minor or how, how much of a major key you're in. If you have sharps, it's major, flats, it's minors. So for a key that's a step higher than normal, we put the hashtag sign or we put a sharp. That's how come sometimes on sheet music, like we saw yesterday, or not yesterday, but last week when I did the Shufflemancy readings for you guys and I showed you the sheet music, um, a couple of the notes had a flat on them. Those are a step lower than usual. Those would hit the black keys on a piano. So they're a little bit lower. Um, and tone can be influenced by key, but also how the note is portrayed. So for example, there are terms of, a lot of terms in music are very Italian. <laughs> and a couple of them are staccato and legato. So if I were to take a note, just any regular note, and I were to make it legato, I would connect it completely without breathing in between. Like, oh, I make it legato, I talk very long. Legato, long. Staccato, I make it super, super short. So I would be curt and short if I were to talk in staccato. That can influence something. So for example, if you're talking to somebody and <laughs> and they are being very curt and short with you, you know that they are really snippy or that they are really on point or crabby or angry about something. Whereas if they're long and their words extend and their breathing isn't connected or things like that, they're a lot slower paced, they're relaxed, they're fuller, you know? Does that make sense? So a couple, one other thing that can also change it, just to give an example, I naturally do this all the time when I sing and it drives people up the wall, <laughs> is a vibrato, which literally it, you make your voice vibrate more. So sometimes, um, Different instruments can make things <laughs> So instead of going a note like ah, uh, I would go ah, uh, I would literally make my voice vibrate. A character that would do that usually is a little bit more stuffy because they have more control over what their voice is doing. Or they're so relaxed, like if you think of someone laughing like that, usually they're it's pretty annoying. <laughs> But that personality is pretty unique, and it makes it very, um, they stand out in the crowd. So if you want, if you think of a character in a tarot deck where it has a group of people and one of them is in the front, the one in the furthest front might be singing vibrato if, if they were in a musical, you know? Is everybody with me so far? Give me hearts or thumbs up or something, if you get what I'm saying so far. I will drink. Okay. Yes! Perfect! <laughs> yeah, Kimberly says, like, La Carlotta from Phantom. Exactly. She uses a lot of vibrato. Whereas Christine doesn't use that much vibrato because, one, she's not classically trained as much. She is, but not as long as Carlotta. And she is very much, um, she's not a show-offy. Come on. I have pop-ups coming up. Go away. So if you want an extreme example, usually people make fun of opera singers by making fun of their vibrato. So that's a really good comparison. Awesome, Kimberly. Another thing to think about it, I have some things we can listen to here. Depending on it, how the tone is displayed and what they put into like how staccato or how legato the different sounds are, it can make instruments within the same section, like for the string section, sound very different. So we're gonna listen to three different ones here. So we can um, define how they sound. Let's mute myself so I can actually do this. <laughs> so the first one is that instrument I couldn't remember the name of yesterday, a guzing. It's been a long time since I've done Chinese. <laughs> And you'll notice what comes to mind. Hi, Missy, when you hear this. What keywords pop into your mind when you hear this instrument?
Let me know you can hear it. What comes to mind for you? See, I can literally see it. She, it looks like a harp, but she has these little things taped on her fingers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It looks like a harp, but it's in front of her and she's going like this as she plays it or she's pushing on the string. Kimberly says, I usually think of grace, refinement, and wisdom. Yeah, when I think of Eastern music, I get super zen. <laughs> I want to wear silks and I'm super relaxed and I want to meditate and have some tea. But Lena, um, she's basically, she's got very, these kind of movements where she's plucking it. Okay. Or sometimes she goes like this over one specific line. So it's very staccato with it because literally her hands are bouncing, but then her wrist is super legato. So it's very fluid. Hi, Tammy. And it sounds like a harp but with emphasis on one or two notes. It's super interesting. But if we have that sound versus a violin, okay, awesome, Lena, I'm glad. If you think of a violin, it's like this on a long bow. And usually the fingers are going one or two like this. It's very long. She's literally swaying as she plays it. It's very flowing. And she was doing uh, Perfect by Ed Sharon, a cover of that. So it's super flowing because it has a longer bow. It's a difference in the instrument where instead of having little nails on the ends of your fingers, it's a long bow doing it. Ah, Kimberly says, I love the violin. If I ever took up an instrument again, that would be my top pick. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I adore the violin. Um, and it. I feel like it's also be. It's because of the song that I'm going to play next <laughs> that I really want to play it. Um, because also the violin is the closest in vocal range to, um, to a human vocal range than any other instrument. And it, I've always loved it. But let's see. Let me pause this and get back to the spot where I was at. So the next one is from The Fiddler on the Roof, which a fiddle and a violin are two different things. A fiddle is smaller than a violin, and it's usually used in more of the countryside. It's not as refined. So if we hear the difference be just between that and a violin... If I could play this... <laughs> it would be so much different. But it's the same thing as a violin where it's long, but it's super, it's super, it's more vibrato in the hand because it's shaking more. And it's going, boom, 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 boom. It's a lot sharper. And a fiddle is faster than a violin typically, so it's more staccato. Ah, oh, I love it. <laughs> it's 
and it's usually, like I said, it's a lot smaller, so it's used for quicker action as well. So give me hearts or thumbs up if you can understand what I'm talking about. The tone, all of these were stringed instruments, but the way that they were played on the strings produce different sounds. Um, and the way that they were played through action made it quite different. Kimberly says, I think it's interesting to see the contrast between them. I'm a big lover of Celtic music and both are used for different kinds of music. Exactly. Yeah, it, all music, um, we can really see it with musical instruments, but it's also like if we were to have two singers within the same vocal range, which I'm going to get to in a second. If they're within the same range, singing the same song, sometimes it's a little bit different. Or if we take the same song and have two different people sing it, it's it, it's interesting to see that variation because everyone's sound or timbre is a little bit different. So it makes it, it trains your ear to be a little bit more like, ooh. And then if you can see the person doing it, just watching their body movements, that can give a clear display of how different it is you know so going along with this sometimes when it comes to tone we will skip steps on a musical staff and depending on how far we skip that can says that can say something about a character so for example if we think of somewhere over the rainbow from the wizard of oz that is an octave leap which an octave is when we go from do all the way up to do. So do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Oh, hi, Jade. When we go from do to do on a staff. So somewhere over the rainbow. When we go like that, we have a huge leap. So that kind of character in a card is going to go from boom all the way to whoosh, all the way up. And just the fact that they do that, they have a little bit more air to them because they have enough head space to go an octave up. <laughs> or another example, if we think of pop music, so let's say s &M by Rihanna, we see her on a music staff go between one and two, just back and forth, go boom, 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 boom. There's a na, 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 come on. It goes like that. And it's super easy like that. It shows that she is being very stagnant in what she's saying in the song, which makes sense <laughs> if you do the song s and M. So when we move greater distance with a character or if a vocalist moves a greater distance across the scale, it shows that they have more variation. They're a lot more I don't want to say creative, but they're more open-minded because they're more stretched out. Whereas a character that is usually very stagnant in a musical or in an opera and they sing within like a couple of notes, they're more firm in what they're saying. Does that make sense? Give me hearts or likes if you understand. I will wait a second. <laughs> I see no questions, so I will assume yes. So one thing that can define this, and that was the songs that I was popping up for you guys today for you to watch, um, is vocal ranges. If we were to take a look at usually storytelling in any kind of way. A certain character or a person that has more influence in a certain area or lesser influence has a certain vocal range. We see this a lot of the time in opera, but we see this even in everyday music. So for example, sopranos. They are, we usually hear sopranos as Mariah Carey, where they're super, super high. Um, Whitney Houston, Madonna is one, Beyonce is one. Well, Beyonce goes back and forth between soprano and mezzo-soprano. Uh, Kate Bush. These are usually very light 
their head space is they sing all the way up here and they really use their soft palate a lot. So their tone is super crisp and super airy, you know. A mezzo soprano is a little bit lower. These, this is still women. There are men that can go up into that falsettos. They can, whoo, and they're ridiculous. <laughs> um, they can go up in this range. This is usually women here. So mezzo sopranos are a little bit underneath a soprano. They don't sing as high, but they can. I'm a mezzo soprano. And these are Melanie Martinez, Rihanna, the two singers in ABBA, and Barbara Streisand. They're all mezzos. And they have the ability to go high, but also the ability to go really low as well. They're very, very fluid. Altos, um, we think of Cher. These, these are women with really deep, bassy voices, but they don't go into bass range. So Toni Braxton, for sure. We think of Nina Simone, where they're very, very low, so they use their chest voice a lot. And then as we go even deeper, we get into tenors, and these are usually the men's ranges. So we have, for tenors, uh, Luciano Pavarotti, one of the most famous tenors in the world. We also have Josh Groban. Um, a lot of male singers like Neo, Chris Brown, Bruno Mars, they're tenors. If you hear them still hit high notes, they're usually a tenor. Baritones, we do Frank Sinatra. We have Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash. They're usually in their chest as they sing. And then we have our basses. <laughs> and bass is the lowest that you can do go besides um, there are some, oh, they're really, really low and usually down in the diaphragm. They're ridiculously low. And um, basses are usually Nat King Cole, Screamin' Jay Hawkins, Chris Cornell, David Bowie, things like that. So... You can kind of hear with, even if you were to take a look at each of these different singers and watch their attitudes, the way that they present themselves, um, the type of music that they play or they sing, you can tell based on their range what they would be and how their tone and their voice defines them, which is not a bad thing at all. It's just where if we were to take this into a tarot cards context and specifically in the suit of cups today, which is what we're focusing on, where they would fall into the suit of cups. So for example, also usually because the key or a tone a character has in an opera, that also defines their body position or their body type or their just their personality in general and just like we can do it from a singer's voice in an opera, we can do the exact same with tarot cards. So to give some examples, that way you guys have it as well. If we were to take Bruno Mars, let's go Bruno Mars again. He's a tan he's a tenor. He's charismatic. He's smaller. <laughs> he is a short man. Um, he's skinnier. He's very light on his feet. And in turn, his voice is super high. It's just how his body is. He's also very upbeat. He has a six of cups attitude where um, it's almost like that kid in high school that would just sing and dance just for the hell of it. He was popular and probably a goofy friend that you had in high school. You know, he has, he has a six of cups attitude for me. Or he, he's a little bit of the sun where he's super poppy and he's upbeat. He's constantly moving. Another person of his era would be James Brown because um, he gets a lot of his inspiration from him. Michael Jackson would be the exact same way. All of them are super tenor. They're super bouncy. And they would be the more lighthearted cup cards. Also, if we were to keep going to give a complete opposite. Who here has seen Beauty and the Beast? Either the cartoon Disney version or the new Disney version with Emma Watson. Because if you haven't, one thing that you can do, just look it up real quick. Look up Gaston real quick. Um, Lena did. Awesome. So Gaston, the villain, big buff man, 
who's very full of himself, constantly has the shoulders back and the long ponytail. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen the new one, because I'm... I have issues with the new one. I might have to suck it up and watch it. <laughs> I prefer the Disney, like the the cartoon version. So when I think of Gaston, I think of the cartoon one, where he is Mr. Macho Man and deep bass voice. Usually in a story, if we were to match songs to the characters, the deeper the voice you have, male or female, the more villainous you are. That's just how it goes. And he has this rumbly, deep voice, which is beautiful to listen to. I prefer basses, but that's just me. <laughs> and so if we were to listen to him, he's more pompous. He's braggy. He's a hunter. So usually the brasses are, they're used anyway for hunters when it comes to music, when it comes to ballet and opera and everything. So... I would give him a Five of Swords attitude. There isn't really a Cups that I would fit him in, except maybe the reversed King of Cups, because he's not very... relatable. Except if you were to take it from time period standpoint, then he's relatable in the epitome of his time period, you know? So... Or even you could do a reversed Six of Pentacles for him, especially when he was when he's locking down Bell and he's going to go kill the beast and everything like that. So we ourselves even can fall into a natural vocal range. We, depending on the tone of your voice and how high or how low it is, that's how you know if you're a soprano or a tenor or alto. So do you guys know from the tone of your voice, what your range is, since we have a lot of musically trained people here. Because I'm a mezzo. I can go all the way up to high G for soprano range and then down to super low bass range. But that's because I'm nuts. <laughs> and I like to push myself. Or, if you don't know your ranges, what sounds do you prefer? Do you like your super low ranges or do you like them super, super high? Pop it in the comments. Kimberly says, I'm more of a mezzo. I was told second soprano, first alto when I was in choir. Yeah. They put me in the altos and all the way in the back because I was the loudest. <laughs> and I could carry the note and I could do it just fine. <laughs> but sometimes they'd bring me over and put me in the sopranos just because. Awesome. But I don't know. It's also, if you think about it in terms of a card, then a mezzo soprano usually is a support. They're usually in the middle because you have your high, high sopranos that give the top, top note. You give your altos and your mezzos that give the, the give the some, the bass and all that. Contralto. Okay. Contralto is in the middle there. That's awesome, Lena. Lisa says mezzo, but unpracticed, so closer to alto these days. Awesome. Which, that's very interesting. Because um, I've noticed that, that a lot of readers, um, at least that I've run into within the past couple of years, we usually have an alto range. Um, whether they're musically trained or not, they usually are within here for speaking and for singing and everything. That's super interesting. That's awesome. So, like... Because, um, where was I at? So because you know that your natural range fits somewhere. Oh, Lena says, I don't sing anymore as I don't hear myself anymore. That's understandable. I, I know, um, I know that can be difficult. Um, but at least then you have kind of an idea for what I want to go with this. Because... You know your range of at least what you used to be and what you are now. So there's a card that would fit your range. And as I was saying, like, usually the mezzos are in the middle. And the tenors sometimes are in the middle supporting 
the basses and the, the mezzas support the sopranos. So we can kind of see this curve as we go through the cups. We start with an ace that's super high and pure, so they would be the sopranos, and then it would dip down into the mezzos and the altos as we get towards the middle. And then we vary a little bit with the basses, and then we could go all the way back up. So that's one thing to keep in mind today as you go through these cards. Because, at least in my mind, when I was thinking about this, we have teenagers, usually their voices are fluctuating a little bit, um, especially the men. So they fit more into a five of cups and four of cups attitude when it comes to vocal range. They're Because those are the cards usually that show disappointment um, or being stuck in a rut. Maybe eight of cups as well. Um, children under six years old usually are a six of cup. I think of really light music. I think of castrati, which if you don't know castrati are... Um, they used to take young boys and in order to keep their voices super, super high and in that soprano range when they were younger, they would castrate them so their balls wouldn't drop and they, in turn, their voices wouldn't drop. So I think of that, very high pitch flute sounds. Um, whereas weddings, which usually have a chorus of voices or a duet of some kind, like a baritone and... Um, a baritone and a soprano singing together, that would be the two of cups for me. So they can even harmonize in some of these cards. So today, as you go through and pick your next songs within uh, the cups, the suit of cups, first of all, it's a lot less harder <laughs> than yesterday because you don't have to come up with 22 songs. But now this gives you a chance to play with tone a little bit and you don't have to do this with just voices you can do this with instruments on high instruments and low instruments and so does the ice of cups have a soprano high singing voice to you or is it more low does the king of voice not the king of voice the king of cups have a low rumbly bass for you or is he a lot more light-hearted and poppy and you know, not so in the diaphragm as, as he's in, like, his neck and his head voice. So, just some things to keep in mind today. You don't have to 100% go look up a bunch of sopranos <laughs> and a bunch of altos and all that kind of stuff and put that into your playlist. But keep tone in mind as you go through creating your playlist today. And it will be super fun. And again, if you can't figure out how to do... The YouTube videos, like the YouTube playlist, that's okay. You can literally just list it out and it'll be just fine. So, do you guys have questions about tone and how you could use this with the suit of cups today? And how it can influence a reading even in interpreting the cards? Do you have questions? Okay, I see no questions. So awesome. <laughs> Not from you, awesome. Awesome, Kimberly's got it, it's awesome. So today, like I said, just have some fun. Be sure, here is the workbook for today. Let me get it. Workbook. Here's the workbook for today. Um, be sure to make a new thread. You don't have to add it on to your one from yesterday with your new playlist stuff. Um, and if you have any thoughts you want to share from the workbook, feel free. Go for it. <laughs> and again, there's no pressure here. The whole point of this is just supposed to be super fun. And if you have issues trying to figure out music or how to do this, um... If music or isn't your forte, if you're more visual, use what we learned from yesterday with music videos. If you have, because um, we did this with the costume your cards, how we have warmer colors and cooler colors, you can do the same thing. Warmer colors usually are higher tone, and cooler colors are usually lower tone. 
So you can do it that way as well. Use sometimes color or a person's body shape. Um, usually the bigger the person, the more bassy their voice is. I know. <laughs> That's just usually the trend that you see. So if you have to do it that way as well, go for it. There's no problem with it. As long as you are having fun and you're exercising your creative mind, you're totally good. Lena says, thank you very much, Rish Chill, especially for your patience with my ears. You are totally fine. Okay, don't worry about it. That's why I'm here. I'm happy to help you. So if you do need extra help after you get some sleep, of course, because I know it's late over there, <laughs> definitely shoot me a message and I'm more than happy to help you out. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Enjoy. <laughs> and I look forward to listening to all your music. Bye.